Hi, my name is Zick Friedemi. I'm a nurse practitioner. I have been teaching RNs how to start IVs using the ultrasound as a visualization device. One of the questions I get is, what do I practice on? And once I've learned this skill, how do I maintain my skills? Well, a good way to do this is by using models. There are commercially available models out there. Blue Phantom makes an excellent model. The trouble is, they're good for about 400 sticks, and then you have to chuck it and buy a new model. Each one of these models will run you between 380 and 500 bucks a piece. Now there is another option. You can make a homemade model. Now these models will run you about five bucks a piece, but they only do last about 200 to 250 sticks a piece. So that's what this presentation is all about: how to make a cheap homemade model that works just as well as this fancy Blue Phantom. To start with, you need to get yourself some Knox gelatine. I like to get the box that has 32 envelopes in it. One of these boxes are going to run you between 10 and 12 bucks. With one of these boxes, you're going to be able to make four models. You're going to need to get yourself a tub of Metamucil. I like to use the orange colored Metamucil because it hires, it hides the Penrose drains that are going to simulate your veins. Also make sure that you get the sugar-free model. And the reason for that is if you use the model that has the Metamucil that has sugar in it, the sugar dissolves in the water and you're going to have to actually use twice as much Metamucil to get the same results. One of these tubs runs you 20 to 25 bucks and you can make 30 models out of one of these tubs. I like to use a quarter inch Penrose drain. Um, the reason I like the quarter inch size is because it simulates what you're going to be actually aiming for in human patients. Then you need some common household items, a measuring cup, a whisk, some measuring spoons. You're going to need a Tupperware container that's approximately 8 by 2 by 4. The dimensions aren't that important. You do need to make sure that you at least have 2 inches of height. 2 to 3 inches of height is probably a good number. I do spray the inside of my Tupperware before I start this whole process with some kind of nonstick spray. So the way we're actually going to make this is we're going to make a bottom layer. We're going to put the Penrose drains on top of that bottom layer. And then we're going to make a top layer that covers it all up. So to make the bottom layer, I start with 250 cc's of water, I put it in a pot, and I slowly bring the water to a boil. I'm looking for just little bubbles coming off the bottom of the pot. When I start seeing that, I start mixing the gelatin into the water. Continuously be whisking, whisking, and stirring, and stirring. You don't want to get any clumps of gelatin in this water. Once it's all dissolved, you're going to add a tablespoon of Metamucil. Once again, stir so you don't get any clumps. Take that whole mixture, pour it into your Tupperware container, and then stash it in the refrigerator for about an hour. Then I'm going to take your Penrose drain, and you're going to cut it in half. So now you have two 9-inch sections. Tie a knot on the top of each Penrose drain. Fill the drain with water. Try to get out all the bubbles that you can, because water is what's going to simulate the veins. Then you're going to knot the other ends. So what you're going to end up with is about two 8-inch sections of a Penrose drain filled with water, knots on each end. Then take the tub out of the refrigerator, lay your Penrose drains on top of that first layer. What I like to do is take, at this point, some paper clips and bend them into the shape of a staple, and then I tack down the Penrose drains. And the reason I do this is because I don't want the Penrose drains to move when I pour that second layer on top of the first layer. Now the second layer is actually thicker than the first layer. So I start with 425 cc's of water. Once again, I bring it up to that boil that I described before. I'm going to use five packets of gelatine this time. Make sure it's completely stirred in there, all clumps are gone. Then take 1.5 tablespoons of Metamucil and stir it all up till all clumps are gone. I'll actually kind of take a piece of tissue paper and strain the top to try and get all the clumps out of this mixture. Now with this layer, I'm actually going to let this layer cool before I pour it onto my first layer. Usually it takes between 20 and 25 minutes. So I'll put it on the non-hot burner on the stove and just let it cool. And every five minutes I'll go there and I'll stir it to make sure that this thing is cooling evenly. So after 25 minutes, I take that mixture and I pour it on top of the first layer. Then I'm going to take the whole thing and place it in the refrigerator for about two hours. After two hours, I take it out and this is what you're going to see. It's not completely solidified, but it's pretty solid at this point. So I'll take a putty knife or a butter knife and I'll go around the edges 
and loosen up this mold. I'll take some wax paper, turn the model upside down, and plop it out. Then I'll wrap it in my wax paper, put it in a Ziploc bag, and put it in the refrigerator overnight. Your finished product, when you put it under an ultrasound, is going to look just like this. There is practically no difference between what you see there and what you would see with a blue phantom. And you know what? It looks pretty darn close to what you would see on a human just as well. The difference being that this model costs about five bucks per model to make and about three hours of your time in that blue phantom model will run you about 400 bucks a piece. I put together a quick equipment list so you can just print off this one screenshot and you'll have everything you need to make a model. I hope you have lots of fun working with the ultrasound learning how to start IVs. Thank you for listening.